Yellowstone supervolcano eruption, 191 quakes struck in the past month. Does that mean that the supervolcano is recharging? Sean Martin Express UK from USGS and reports that almost 200 quakes rocked Yellowstone area in the last month, triggering fears that the world's biggest supervolcano that is, we know that it has the biggest magma chamber and reservoir in the world, from what geologists know up to now. It's just below the surface, three miles under the surface, and it could erupt. Yellowstone National Park, as we know, is uh, sitting northwest of Wyoming, it's bordering Montana, stretches into Montana and Idaho and it was hit by staggering 191 earthquakes in the past 28 days, according to USGS. I would say there's a lot more than that. It's more like 300 or so, because you have to take in the fact that it's also rocked Montana, the northwest area of the uh, supervolcano. Now, uh, you, don't, you can't just include the quakes that are in the park, because the park extends outside of the uh, Wyoming borders into Montana, where we have Hebgen Lake that gave the 7.3 magnitude in 1959. It's outside of the uh, uh, Wyoming border in Montana, and it's still, of course, part of the supervolcano. So it's an average from here, what they say, the 191 earthquakes is an average of almost seven earthquakes per day. The earthquakes are small, the strongest being about 2.9 magnitude in the park that hit October 16. And the tremors in Yellowstone region, as we know, are not uncommon. Almost 200 in one month is rare. It's more than 200, as we said before, I explained to you. With the National Park Service stating that the region usually has about 700 a year. Again, they're talking about the park. They're not talking about the supervolcano. Uh, otherwise, it would have to include a lot more earthquakes. Now, although the uh, upper scale can have up to 3,000 quakes in a year, the unusual amount of earthquakes and tremors, and even quake swarms, we see quake swarms as well, is causing panic with people fearing that it could, of course, mean that an eruption could be coming. One person who just gave the name Adam wrote on Twitter, Quote, Yellowstone earthquakes continue. The supervolcano is recharging for the next eruption. Now, the USGS geologists, of course, are saying that this is normal activity and not to worry. And, um, and they keep saying that we don't know when earthquakes will happen and we don't know when volcanic eruptions will happen. Uh, but there are certain signs. And uh, from what we've been reading in articles lately, um, even uh, uh, an uptick in the magnetism of the area can give you a five-day warning of, a, of an earthquake, which is fantastic. Um, there are signs, for example, gas emissions, carbon dioxide emissions, sulfur dioxide emissions. Uh, there are, of course, the quake swarms. There is, of course, the deformation. We've had a very strange, unusual event that from since last March, Steamboat Geyser in the uh, northwest of the park in the Norris Geyser Basin has been erupting just about every week. I think it's just finished the 74th eruption, uh, total, total from last year to this year, and uh, still ongoing. And that's something very strange. That's a, that's a change. We've also seen that there's an uptick in earthquakes in Yellowstone because of the Ridgecrest earthquakes. There's also an uptick in the Long Valley Caldera supervolcano because of the Ridgecrest earthquakes. It's jostled everything in the area. That's how strong it was. And just remember, Ridgecrest is on the Casa Volcanic Field. It has a magma chamber underneath. And that magma chamber, as we said in yesterday's and the day before videos, that magma chamber is connected to the magma chamber that feeds the uh, high threat volcanoes of the west coast. That's one arm, the left arm goes there, it's like, a, it's like a Y with round arms. 
Uh, it's coming from the U.S.-Mexico border. So one arm, the left arm, goes towards the Walker Lane fault system, feeding the high threat and very high threat volcanoes on the west coast. And the other arm, on the right, goes towards the faults that go up through Nevada, into Idaho, and into Wyoming and Montana, making those quakes. And also that's, that's a magma corridor underneath, feeding Yellowstone. That we have confirmed, you know, and this, I'm not making this up. This is what the geological findings tell us. So there are ways that you can find out what's happening. Um, you have gravity increase. When you have an, a gravity increase, that means that the magma is coming up. Um, coming up. Uh, and uh, there are things that they measure. All right. Now. This atom says that uh, it's recharging, and that's, that's why we have all these earthquakes. 191 earthquakes hit in a month, he says, the supervolcano is recharging. We don't know who he is. Now, in day, indeed, some geologists do believe that series of tremors or quake swarms can be a precursor for a volcanic eruption. Portland State University geology professor Emeritus Scott Burns has said, if you get swarms under a working volcano, the working hypothesis is that magma is moving up underneath there. Now there are others that disagree about whether an earthquake swarm near a volcano could be a sign of things to come. One of these who disagree is Jamie Farrell of the University of Utah Salt Lake City and he says he believes that this is just part of the natural cycle for Yellowstone, saying earthquake swarms are fairly common in Yellowstone. As we said, we had them 20 years ago when we had the uh, latest, the last uh, magnitude 7.1 earthquake in Ridge Friskin, again, it was in August of uh, 1999. And a few weeks after that quake, Yellowstone had an uptick in uh, quake swarms and quakes. The same thing with Long Valley Caldera Supervolcano, because that quake also jostled the whole area, just like this quake did in Ridgecrest. Now, um, Jamie Farrell said there is no indication that this swarm of earthquakes is related to magma moving through the shallow crust. Now we know the Yellowstone supervolcano in, the, in Wyoming last erupted in, uh, with a super eruption 640,000 years ago. And according to the United States Geological Survey, the chances of Yellowstone erupting is around 1 in 730,000. With 640,000 years having passed since the last eruption, we're talking about major eruption, super eruption. Yellowstone is edging closer to uh, an eruption, an explosion, but it could still be thousands of years away. Okay, so uh, the experts now are preparing for the worst and are studying how a major eruption, which could wipe out large swaths of U.S., could be prevented from uh, Yellowstone. Um, NASA has even come up with the idea of trying to cool down the magma chamber uh, that and, and even if they were able to do that, which they, which uh, Mike Poland, who's in charge of Yellowstone, will not let them touch it at all. And he stated many times he will not touch, he will not let anyone touch Yellowstone, no matter who it is that wants to touch it. Even if NASA was able to try and cool it down, it'll t it would take over sixteen thousand years. It would take over sixteen thousand years to try and cool it down. Uh, they also want to have another geothermal plant there, just like they do with the geysers the biggest geothermal plant in the world, and we see the tre a tremendous amount of quakes there, and there, there's over a thousand every month lately, since, especially since uh, Ridgecrest, a tremendous amount of uh, volcanic activity, uh, earthquakes in, in uh, frequency, and also they're getting bigger, which is not good. That's it to the geysers. And, um, all right, 16,000 years to cool it down. The uh, one NASA employee believes that he found a unique way by feeding cold water into it, as we, talk, we talked about that, into the Yellowstone magma chambers. You know, doing that means that you have a chance, a very good chance, of cracking the roof of the huge magma chamber. You can't treat it like a regular volcano because it's a super volcano. The roof of the magma chamber, the huge magma chamber, is very, could be very brittle, could crack. Uh, they have 
quake, earthquakes and swarms just by the waves of the lake over uh, on Yellowstone Lake. That creates quakes because of the waves lapping over the water. Can you imagine uh, how sensitive earthquake the uh, Yellowstone is? Uh, it's very tender. It's like a tender diva. <laughs> You know, you can't treat it like a regular volcano, from what they're telling, they're telling us. Now, um, NASA engineer Brian Wilcox hopes to stave off the threat, he says, by cooling it down, cooling the magma in the chambers, and around 60 to 70 percent of the heat generated by Yellowstone seeps into the atmosphere. But remember, remaining... Oh my God! That's not good. Okay, that was a that was a fighter jet. It just flew over us really low. Ah, uh, that's not good. That means that something's happening in the Aegean with the Turks. That's not good at all. I would venture to say we're going to have more flying over us. Okay, just down the. Um, I'll explain to you. We have an Air Force base, and we're in an area of northern Athens which is just above uh, the mountains of Marathon, the Sea of Marathon, you know where the Battle of Marathon took place, and that's the opening towards the Aegean Sea. Uh, so it takes him like a half a minute to get there from where he is now, I guess, or if he's not over the Aegean already. Anyway, I'm sorry about that. Um, I hope nothing comes of this. All right, so Brian Wilcox, um, the NASA engineer, wanted to cool it down. He wants to generate 67% of the heat generated from Yellowstone, as he says, seeps into the atmosphere. The remainder built up inside, and if not, if not built, it can trigger an eruption. So by drilling 10 kilometers down into Yellowstone, NASA believes it would be possible to pump high-pressure water into um, the areas around the magma chamber to cool it down uh, to absorb some of that heat uh, before it's pumped back out again. Basically like some kind of a you know a geothermal plant. Wilcox told uh, Brian Walsh in a new book called End Times that the plant could cost three and a half billion dollars and uh, would have the added benefit of using the steam from the water and magma combo to create carbon-free geothermal electricity. Mr. Wilcox told Walsh that the thing that makes Yellowstone a force of nature is that it stores up heat for hundreds of thousands of years before it all goes kabooey all at once. It will be good if we drain away the heat before it could do a lot of damage by doing that again. All right, so uh, USGS scientist Jake Lowenstern told Walsh it all seems a bit fanciful. Well, that's very, very tidy and uh, delicate way of putting things, but uh, I would just reiterate what Mike Poland says, and no one's going to touch Yellowstone while I'm here. <laughs> okay, so that's this, the story with Yellowstone. Um, we know that it has had a tremendous amount of hydrothermal explosions, and I, another video I've been meaning to do and I want to do that very interesting the diatomic sands explosion of diatomic sands and the tufts that come out a, f a tremendous amount of diatomic sands coming out of Yellowstone in the past of course and we know that the diatoms like we take two breaths one is from you know plants and stuff one breath and the second breath has to do with the oxygen that has been created by the diatoms so diatoms are very important in our life. And also we remember that Yellowstone, yes, gives off a lot of heat, a lot of steam, and it's like the radiator for Earth. But, but in conclusion, what I want to remind you of, which we said many times, is that it also gives off carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide that Yellowstone gives off every single day, from what the geologists have measured, is 40,000 tons. Yellowstone gives off every day on a regular day without any explosions, without any hydrothermal explosion, no, nothing. It just seeps out daily 40,000 tons of carbon dioxide. Of course, all this that volcanoes do, they do a tremendous amount of good for our world. You know, they 
filter the water that goes into them. They bring out the hydro, the, okay, a lot of it is toxic, of course, toxic water, but uh, they do filter water as well. And also they keep us warm because of the, high, the carbon dioxide that they, if we didn't have enough carbon dioxide, we would be freezing. We'd be a frozen planet. Uh, now, okay, so it gives off 40,000 tons of carbon dioxide daily. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece and Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.